Good day to everyone. I would like to thank Geneva Environmental Network and Maria de Lourdes in particular for the kind invitation and the opportunity to be with you today. My name is Lorena Jaramillo. I am an Economic Affairs Officer at the United Nations Conference on Trade and Development, UNTAD. UNTAD is the agency within the United Nations system that deals with trade, investment and development issues and supports developing countries to access the benefits of a globalized economy more fairly and effectively. I work on trade and biodiversity in particular and manage the Biotrade Initiative, which supports sustainable trade and investment in biodiversity-based products and services in a way that respects nature and people. I would like to start by congratulating Mercedes and Borel for this compelling and inspiring documentary and paying tribute to the Alpaquero, the women weavers and everyone supporting them. They are true heroes in conserving these valuable species and traditions despite the difficulties along the way. And it's important that they're also provided with means to support their livelihoods and well-being, and also the biodiversity they depend on. And this is exactly what UNTAD's Biotrade Initiative does. The Biotrade Initiative helps people living in and depending on biodiversity to secure their livelihoods through the sustainable sourcing and trade of biodiversity-based products and services in a variety of sectors such as personal care, cosmetics, food, plant-based pharmaceuticals, fashion, handicraft, and natural waste tourism, to name a few. At the core of the Biotrade Initiative are the seven Biotrade Principles and Criteria, which are a set of sustainability guidelines for the production, transformation, and commercialization of products and services derived from plants and animals and ecosystem services that mutually respect biodiversity and the people who depend on it. These seven principles that were firstly launched by UNTAD and Partner in 2007 and updated in 2020 are anchored in the social, environmental and economic pillars of sustainable development, are closely aligned with the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development and its Sustainable Development Goals, the SDGs. These biotrade principles are also in line with multilateral environmental agreements, such as the Convention on Biological Diversity, the Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species of Wild Flora and Fauna, CITES, and the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change. The biotrade principles and criteria are applied to terrestrial, marine, and other aquatic ecosystems and address issues such as conservation, restoration, and sustainable use of biodiversity, equitable sharing of the benefits generated between all actors involved, socioeconomic sustainability, and respect for the rights of indigenous and local communities, to name a few of the topics that are covered in these principles. In practice, the Biotrade principle requires, for example, that Biotrade activities establish long-term equitable partnerships among all actors involved in the value chain, as well as fair pricing for Biotrade products and services that can improve the quality of life for suppliers and their communities. Also, biotrade activities should contribute to local sustainable development. At this point, I am pleased to share with you a few success stories from our biotrade practitioners around the world. But first, let me start in Peru, where the creation of the National Commission for the Promotion of Biotrade in 2010 has mobilized the trade, production, agriculture, forestry, environment, academia, and business sectors to support small and medium enterprises and associations working with native biodiversity in the food supplement subsector, in accessing international markets and be more competitive and sustainable. These actions enable the export to reach approximately 500 million US dollars annually. Another example in the Brazilian Amazon, the Cuba tree has been threatened by illegal logging. A biotrade practitioner and leading cosmetic company in Brazil, Natura Cosmetics, identified the cosmetic potential for the Ucuba berry whose commercial value is higher than what communities receive for one time cutting the tree. Now, over 800 local harvester families are earning three times more by collecting the ukuba berries than by cutting the trees. Another example is in Namibia, where the Eudafana Women's Cooperative, which is a woman-led initiative, produces marula oil under the biotrade principles and criteria for the domestic and international cosmetic industry. Through its activities, the cooperative benefits 2,500 women and their communities. The revenue has increased over the years, and despite the COVID-19 pandemic, the sales of marula kernels fetched by the cooperative members increased by 14% between 2019 and 2020. Finally, 
In the Mekong region, the FICO funded regional biotech program implemented by Laos People's Democratic Republic, Myanmar, and Vietnam by Elveta Swiss Intercooperation and local partners enhance the livelihood of over 13,500 people, 52% of whom are women, by creating jobs and or increasing income. Export by biotrade companies trading native biodiversity products increased by 300% from 2018. To further assist biotrade practitioners and other interest actors and enhance practical knowledge on biotrade, biodiversity conservation, sustainable, building sustainable livelihoods and sustainable businesses, we have developed jointly with International Trade Center an online self-assessment tool for producers, companies, projects, and other actors to benchmark and improve their practices against the biotrade principles and criteria. This tool was developed under the Global Biotrade Program funded by the Swiss State Secretariat for Economic Affairs, TECO. You can find more information on the case studies, best practices, guidelines, and methodologies, and tools, including the online self-assessment tool at our website. Also, follow us on social media at Biotrade Group via Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn. You can also learn more about Biotrade and its principles in our animation video. This year, Biotrade is celebrating 25 years of existence. From a mere concept, Biotrade is now a reality for millions of producers, farmers, collectors, hunters, breeders, fishers, and workers in over 80 countries in Asia, Africa, the Americas, and Europe. During this time, the global sales of Biotrade products increased from 40 million US dollars in 2003 to over 9 billion euros in 2020. Besides monetary benefits, Biotrade has also provided various non-monetary benefits to value chain actors and their communities I shared with you before. This documentary on alpaqueros has allowed us to also reflect on the importance of sustaining their well-being, but also how we as individual consumers can support the livelihoods of such initiatives. As consumers, our purchasing decision could influence sustainable production. Our concerted efforts in buying products that respect people and the planet can make a difference. To do this, we can make small changes to our consumer habits. For example, by getting familiar with the labels. Labels matter because they show the products and services ethical and sustainable production practices. Second, be curious. Does your product or service come from ethical, sustainably sourced, and fairly researched and developed ingredients? Third, do not buy products made from endangered species. Think twice before you buy products made from endangered plants or animals. And last but not least, acknowledge and understand that the importance of building livelihoods for communities across the value chains, which are conserving biodiversity, reinforces a more sustainable and nature-conscious lifestyle. Again, thank you, Maria de Lourdes and Jen, Mercedes, and all the people that made this event possible, and for raising awareness on the alpaqueros and all the other actors in the value chain, as well as on the importance to support, sustain, and celebrate such novel initiatives. We need to ensure that we leave no one behind if we want a chance at achieving the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development and its SDGs. I wish you a fruitful and inspiring viewing of the documentary. Thank you very much.